On the news tonight, Supreme Court sacks Emmanuel Boacha as Taraba APC governorship candidate. Also, the Supreme Court fixes date to rule on suit against Ahmad Lawan's senatorial candidacy. And cash scarcity hits major cities in Nigeria as POS operators charge double for withdrawals. Glad to have you join us on News Now at this hour. I am Sinisola Atikun. The Supreme Court has nullified the nomination of Emmanuel Boacha as the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress APC in Taraba State. Delivering judgment on Wednesday, a five-member panel led by Kudarat Kekereakon affirmed the verdict of the Federal High Court, which held that the APC candidate did not, APC rather, did not conduct any valid governorship primary in the state. David Sambo Kente, one of the aspirants, had filed the suit against Boacha's candidature. In its judgment, the Apex Court held that the Court of Appeal was wrong to have set aside the decision of the trial court, initially sacking Boacha and ordered that a fresh primary be conducted. Meanwhile, a federal high court in Yalingo on Friday sat Bacha from the Senate for defecting to the All Progressive Congress, APC. The Supreme Court also has fixed February 6 for the final judgment in the long-drawn legal battle over the authenticity of the senatorial candidate of the All Progressives Congress for Yobe North Senatorial District. Entangled in the legal battle for the senatorial ticket are the incumbent Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Bashir Machina. Justice Chima Onweze, who presided over a five-man panel of justices of the court, fixed the date after taking arguments from counsel of both parties. APC, which is rooting for Senate President Ahmed Lawan as its senatorial candidate, filed the appeal against the judgment of the Federal High Court and Court of Appeal, which held Bashir Machina as the party's candidate. Now joining me to discuss the Supreme Court's judgment is a political affairs analyst, Shegun Shokwitan. Many thanks for joining me on the news, Shegun. Now this is the second time Emmanuel Bacha will be sacked as the APC governorship candidate for Taraba State on the grounds that he did not comply with the electoral law and now the court has ordered for a fresh election to be held. Now could this move affect the chances of the APC? Well, um, it definitely will. Um, I mean, let's not forget that the gubernatorial um, elections will hold on March 11th, which is just a little more than a month from now. So they really don't have time to, to, to do this. And, and in any case, I don't think that the Electoral Act 2022 that this election is being run on will allow for any other action on the part of the APC in terms of trying to replace um, uh, Boacha, uh, Senator uh, Emmanuel Boacha. You know, there is a, a, there is a deadline for, which, for submission of the names of candidates um, and a deadline for substitution of those candidates in the events that there are issues, legal battles, and whatever else might happen. And as we all know, those both deadlines have passed we are now in the final running towards the elections. There is no way that the APC can conduct primaries to replace uh, Boacha. So in my view, um, I stand to be corrected. Maybe the legal practitioners will, 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 may, may know better. But in my view, based on the Electoral Act, the APC has lost the election before it has even been held. You know, because what this means is that they don't have a candidate in that election. So they will get votes, uh, but people that know better and the other parties in that election will take full advantage of this and ensure that uh, the electorate are aware that there is no candidate to that party. Remember that this is not a new scenario. In the 2019 elections, uh, Zamfara State was lost to the PDP on similar grounds. Um, River State, uh, the APC suffered a similar fate in River State, so where uh, the, the party lost those elections without even participating in them. Hmm. So this, this would not be the first time that we're seeing this, and I think that the APC is out of that election as it stands. Hmm. 
Now, on another judgment by the Supreme Court, the case between Bachir Mashina and Senate President Ahmed Lawan on the rightful candidate for the APC Yobe North senatorial ticket has been fixed for February 6 for final judgment. Now, how do you think this will pan out? Well, I mean, this is Nigeria, and we know that a lot of times um, things, a lot of things happen under the table that determine final outcomes in mm -hmm. um, cases, you know, judicial or indeed any other sector of the, of the Nigerian society. So I would not be surprised if the Senate president eventually wins this case, and because in any case, the APC actually wants him. It's the APC that is actually pushing this case, not even him as a person. And the reason for that is not particularly far-fetched. We all know that uh, Senate President Ahmed Lawan contested in the primaries for the presidency uh around about the same time that the primaries for the senatorial seats were done you know so what has happened is he's lost out on the senatorial seat lost out in the um in the in the presidential primaries and the party is trying to compensate him so i think that he'll probably scale through this hurdle and will continue to uh, uh operate in the senate but then you know you never can tell uh, we might see a surprise. I, I think it's important to just note that for our political actors, they should understand that uh, the, the period, the season of impunity will come to an end one day in Nigeria. Our politicians are used to uh, playing games with the destiny and the, and, and the, and, 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 and the lives of, of, of the electorate. And I think that they should understand that this will not continue forever. So I hope that the course of justice will be served in these two cases and that well many thanks for joining me on the news for your time and your contribution political affairs analyst Shegun Shokwiton Moving on, more than one month after the official release of the new 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, citizens still lament the scarcity of cash in banks across the country. To make matters worse, several point-of-sale operators have locked their business outlets following the scarcity, while the few ones operating charge higher commissions for every withdrawal. Meanwhile, customers flooded automated telemachines ATMs waiting and expecting new currencies and to make urgent withdrawals. Speaking with TV360 Nigeria, residents in Lagos say the situation has made business transactions difficult for them, adding that amid the fuel scarcity currently ravaging the country, the cash crunch has increased the cost of food items and transportation. The situation of the country is really hard to tell. Like right now there's no money in the country anymore. Um, normal, if you withdraw 5,000, it's normal 100 Naira charges. Right now, if you want to take 5,000 for PS operators, they charge you for 500 Naira, 10,000, 1,000, 20,000, 2,000. One of the 25,000 is 3,000 Naira. So, for instance, today now, I walk all the way from Idushaga looking for money to withdraw, just to come to work. So, are we sure, even with the extension, that there will be money? Are we sure? The situation has affected everybody, you can look. Everywhere is dry. People are not buying markets because there's no money. People who are doing business are not selling. So how we show the extension is going to help. So it's left for the CBN and the government to know what they're supposed to do to help the situation. The POS is not even working at all. We can't use that. The network of, from the bank now is not good at all. We can't withdraw. We can't transfer. If you withdraw, it will be declined and you will be debited. They can't retrieve it. There's nothing we can do. We cannot even get cash at all presently. All I want now is we should be having access to money. That is all I want. Either they extend it or they don't extend it. That one is none of my business. All I know, I have money in my account. I cannot buy food to eat. Why? Last week, uh, Monday, I went to the Keystone Bank to redraw money. Only for me, just two people before me, the money got finished. And it was only one uh, ATM that was dispensing. And the only money that was spent was in 1,000 Naira notes. I couldn't get enough transport to get home yesterday. I had to go to a POS. And they were telling me on Monday, I redraw 20,000, uh, 10,000 Naira for 300 Naira. For me to go there again the following day, which was yesterday, they were telling me 10,000, 1,000 Naira. So you can see it has been so very, very bad. For a country like this, it's very, very, very bad. Everybody has, the masses are suffering. Ever since the introduction of the new Naira notes, we have been having issues getting money from the bank and. Uh, Right now, to even get old notes and the new notes is a very big challenge. Even if you go to the bank, tell them what to withdraw 100k. Before you can get the 100k, you even have to pay. 
to get the 100k and we we cannot be at loss saying uh, we want to give out cash and our charges will still be the same price to prove that we have to increase our charges so that we can get our money back for the amount of money we collected from the bank and then make our uh, interest for it. Proud to the, to the cashless uh, policy. It's easier for us to go to the bank, withdraw money. The moment the cashless policy comes into, into the system, it's very, very difficult to get cash through the bank. So we are also getting this cash from ATM, just like any other Nigerian. We queue up at ATM centers, maybe as early as 7 a.m. in the morning, up to the 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. in the night, waiting for the cash. So it's very, very difficult for us to go through all that pain and someone just come to our shop and they are expecting to get the cash as before. Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rafai has faulted the timing of the Naira redesign, saying the move makes no political or economic sense. In a televised interview on Wednesday, the governor said that though the policy was the right way to go in achieving the desired change the country yearns for, the timing and deadline set for it nullified its purpose. While exonerating President Mohamedou Buhari, El Rafai claimed that some unnamed individuals were leveraging the president's ambition to enthrone a work in Nigeria in order to twat his efforts. Meanwhile, the federal government has responded to allegations by Governor Nasir El Rafai of Kaduna State that some elements in the presidential villa are working against the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress. Reacting to El Rafai's comments, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, while addressing State House correspondent on Wednesday, restated the President Buhari's position that his administration will only focus on ensuring a free, fair and credible election and not favor or cause anyone to be at a disadvantage. He further contended that if there is anyone working against any candidate, it is officially not known. One thing I can assure you is that no matter who, this administration is focused and determined to ensure a free and fair election. And I think this, this administration and those that Matanam, who was the most important person in this administration to me is Mr. President. And I think he has shown by words and by deed that he's committed to a free fair and credible election. And fair, free, and credible election actually means not favoring anybody or disadvantaging anybody. And everywhere he goes, he makes that very clear. Even as recently as Friday, when he was in Dara, he said the same thing. So if there's anybody who's working against any candidate, we don't know officially. Now, the... Speaking on Nigeria's low rating by Transparency International on Tuesday, the minister said the government has very impressive records based on achievements by the EFCC, ICPC, among others, and is therefore not bothered about the ratings. He added that the administration's fight against corruption is not to impress the Transparency International, but to engender growth in the country politically and economically. Transparency international rating of Nigeria. And my position is the same. Well, you see, we're not fighting corruption because we want to impress Transparency International or any organization whatsoever. We are fighting corruption because we believe if we don't fight corruption, there will be no growth, either in terms of, you know, the economy, or even political. Therefore, what we do and what we have put in place to fight corruption is not because we, are, we, we want to be rated by anybody. I'm proud to say that we have been more proactive in fighting corruption, but people are not are not willing to see 
those things that we have put in place in, uh, in fighting corruption. And that's why I gave you that example of, you know, uh, putting aside uh, money that has been returned for specific projects so that we can monitor how those funds have been, have been, uh, no, have been used. Now, again, the courage of this administration, even to expose high-ranking, you know, officials of the administration who have run foul of the law is evidence of our determination and courage to fight corruption. Amid growing pressure to announce his preferred presidential candidate in the forthcoming election, River State Governor Yesom Wike has said he never told the public the method by which he would disclose his choice. Wike said this in response to the former Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency Nemasa Dakuko Peterside, who had challenged Wike to name his presidential candidate as expected. Speaking during a campaign rally in Port Harcourt on Wednesday, Wike said he never promised to reveal his preferred candidate on camera and will tell the people of River State the candidate to support. I have told most people who don't know, this fight we are fighting is like a guerrilla warfare. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The more you look, the less you see. The more you look, the less you see. I never told anybody one day I will bring camera and announce to you this is who will go. I said I will tell reverse people the candidate they will support. Not so. Not so. I did not tell you the method of saying it. I did not tell you I will bring life coverage and say it. But reverse people know. Is it not correct? Yes, sir. Are you not aware? We are aware. Are you not aware? We are aware. In a way, to make a current life uh, coverage, we are here by going to Joseph. Far, far, far. Far, far, far. Far, far, But you are aware. We are aware. You are aware. We are aware. Are you not aware? We are aware. Are you not aware? We are aware. Look at what is happening. And a man who has never passed a is coming to say, name me your candidate. Has he ever campaigned for anybody? He can't. So all what we are doing here, what is the problem? And that's what I want all of you to understand. What is the problem? All we say, what we have said, Every day, every time, is our constitution says you take this and let the apple take that. Is that what he said? That's what he said. Because I said, he endeavor. He endeavor. We'll take a break here, but still to come China tracking Orthros, an emerging, more transmissible COVID variant. We'll bring you this story and more right after this break. Welcome back. Now here's a recap of some of our main stories. Tonight, the Supreme Court has nullified the nomination of Emmanuel Boacha as the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC in Taraba State. David Sabo Kente, one of the aspirants, had filed a suit against Boacha's candidature. Delivering judgment on Wednesday, a five-member panel led by Kudirat Kikiriakon affirmed the verdict of the Federal High Court, which held that the APC did not conduct any valid governorship primary in the state. We also told you that the Supreme Court has fixed February 6 for final judgment in the long drawn battle, legal battle over the authenticity of the senatorial candidate of the All Progressive Congress for Yobi North Senatorial District. Entangled in the legal battle for the senatorial ticket are the incumbent Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Bashir Machina. 
Justice Chima Onweze, who presided over a five-man panel of justices of the court, fixed the date after taking arguments from counsel of both parties. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. The Omicron subvariant CH11, also known as Orthros, which is becoming increasingly prevalent in Britain and the United States, is unlikely to cause another wave of outbreaks in the mainland in the near future, Chinese health authorities have said. Although the most prevalent variants in China continue to be the BA52 and B57, but 24 cases of CH11, a more transmissible subvariant, has been reported in China in the past three months. The emerging variant was first identified in India last July and is now present in 67 countries, accounting for more than 6% of genomic sequence data reported globally. The United States President Joe Biden has informed Congress that his administration will formally end two national emergencies declared to address the COVID-19 pandemic on May 11, restructuring the federal response to the virus as an endemic public health threat. The announcement was made in a statement while opposing resolutions being brought to the floor this week by House Republicans to bring the emergency to an immediate end. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has recorded 1.1 million COVID deaths in the U.S. since 2020, although the death rate has dropped dramatically since vaccines became widely available. We'll take another short break here and be back with more stories in business to stay with us. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places, um, the Lake Chad basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Mary Kano is on standby with business updates. Over to you now, Mary. Thank you, Simisola. Hello and welcome to Business News. Nigeria's public debt stock stood at 44.06 trillion naira in the third quarter of 2022, which is 2.85% higher than the 42.84 trillion naira recorded in the second quarter of 2022. The National Bureau of Statistics revealed this in its Nigerian domestic and foreign debt third quarter 2022 report. The data showed the debt figure comprised the debt stock of the federal government, the 36 state government and the federal capital territory. It however showed that the share of external debt to total public debt stood at 38.9% in the third quarter of 2022, while domestic debt was recorded at 61.08%. I will take a short break and be back with Stock Market Report.
Well, 142 billion naira, that's the amount investors recorded as gains at the close of trading. Market capitalization closed at 29.1 trillion naira. Similarly, the all share index inched higher to 0.49%, that's 53.499 basis points. Today, we see new equities emerge as top gainers, Seplet Energy and Industrial and Medical Gases PLC led 20 gainers just as market breadth closed flat with 20 losers also now despite the gains. The market summary shows decline in volume, value and deals as 200 million volume of shares were traded in 3,716 deals. Now, it's been three consecutive days of positive trading for the NGX. Investors can only hope the gains can be replicated in future trade. Now, a look at some select global stocks. Another mixed trading day for the FTSE and Dow Jones in the UK and US. Stocks slipped as investors await the latest policy decision from the Federal Reserve. That's why we can see that the FTSE is trading at 0.15% and the Dow Jones is also trading down at 0.70%. And that's the stock market report. Simisola, back to you. Thank you very much, Mary. And on the global scene, the United States and its allies have imposed further sanctions on Myanmar's military rulers amid deepening conflicts two years since the military seized power in a coup. In a statement by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Washington imposed sanctions on six individuals and three entities linked to the regime's efforts to generate revenue and secure arms. Meanwhile, the United Nations Special Reporter on Human Rights in Myanmar, Tom Andrews, has described the country's military administration as illegal and illegitimate. He cautioned that the regime appeared to be trapped to be trying to seek legitimacy through elections and urge the international community not to provide any support. And in, and in sports, the Nigeria Football Federation has decorated 29 referees with fever batches and urged them to be upright in the discharge of their duties. President of the NFF, Ibrahim Gosso, said this on Wednesday at the 2023 FIFA badging ceremony at the conference hall of the Gold Project in Abuja. Represented, uh, representing the NFF General Secretary, Sanusi Mohammed, Gosso said, the FIFA, said that FIFA had become Nigeria's ambassadors who should consider the image of the country when called upon. Gosso further advised the referees to showcase the rare qualities that made them worthy of consideration for elite reference status. Well, that's our package this evening. Many thanks for watching. I'm Simi Sola Bye for now.